Hi, and welcome to Stephen Helwig Talks Tech. Today I'm going to be walking you through how to set up an Azure Synapse Analytics POC environment. Microsoft recently just released this ARM template on GitHub, and it allows you to create a full-fledged environment in just a few easy clicks. In addition, it creates some logic apps that pause and restart the environment to help you manage cost. Whether you're a data scientist or an IT administrator, this is the easiest way to get started with Azure Synapse Analytics. So let's get into it. Now, before we get into deploying the POC, I wanted to tell you a little bit more about Azure Synapse Analytics and also a little bit about myself. I work for Microsoft as a director of cloud architecture, and, and that means I manage a team of really talented data architects and data scientists who help our enterprise customers solve some of their most challenging business problems, leveraging Azure Data Services. One of those key data services that we use is Azure Synapse Analytics. If you're just interested in getting straight down to the POC, feel free to look in the description and there'll be timestamps as to when that POC starts in this video. You can always jump ahead there. But for now, let me tell you a little bit about Azure Synapse Analytics. So let's talk a little bit about what Azure Synapse Analytics really is. Azure Synapse Analytics is a limitless scale data warehouse that allows you to deliver insights from your data at blazing fast speeds. It's the evolution of our Azure SQL data warehousing platform. And by evolution, I mean, we're adding things to that platform. It's not just SQL over your data anymore, but it's also Spark, it's also machine learning, it's also integration. And I'll talk a little bit more in a couple slides about how that's brought together. As we look across the competitive landscape, we see that Azure Synapse Analytics delivers the best price to performance ratio of any of the major cloud providers data warehouse platform. It's 94% less than BigQuery, and it's up to 14% faster than other cloud providers. Azure Synapse Analytics allows you to bring in all of the various data sources that you have into a single unified data store. So whether that's your SaaS data, your streaming data, your cloud data, your on-premise data, you can all land that data in Data Lake as a single source of truth. On top of that, you have various options for querying against that data. One of them is SQL, T-SQL, which many people are familiar with. And that is, once again, the evolution of that SQL data warehousing platform. The other is Apache Spark and allowing you to run Spark jobs in real time over that data. You can also bring in Azure machine learning models into that data, and it's all stitched together in a unified experience with Azure Synapse Studio. So whether that's your integration through Azure Data Factory, your management plane, your monitoring or your security, it's all available to you in Synapse Studio. And then at the end, you can visualize it with Power BI. In the end, Azure Synapse Analytics delivers limitless scale, powerful insights, a unified experience through Azure Synapse Studio, instant clarity over your data, and unmatched security. Okay, now let's get into the POC. Okay, let's take a look at the POC template and what it takes to deploy this. If you wanted to follow along with me in the description, there's a link to this GitHub repo. The first part is the set of scripts that are gonna be used to deploy this template. Inside this nested templates folder are actually the, the deployment scripts for the logic apps that do the pausing and resuming of the SQL pool. We'll go over that in a little bit, as well as the other deployment scripts and of course the readme, which we're gonna go through now. The first part of the readme is this deploy to Azure button uh, and this visualizer, which actually doesn't visualize much in this case, but the deploy to Azure button is what we're gonna use to deploy the script shortly. Um, and so we'll come back to that in a little bit. Here is the list of all of the resources that are deployed inside Azure when you run this template. So the first is the Synapse Analytics workspace. It's that unified experience we talked about earlier. Uh, there's some optional settings here around the firewall to allow all connections, uh, another setting to allow Azure services, as well as a managed virtual network that's enabled on deployment. Uh, it will deploy an Azure Synapse SQL pool. This is what we will use to do SQL queries against our data once it's deployed, as well as an At Apache Park Spark pool. Now, now this is optional, but I would highly recommend you deploy this if you ever if you want to test out Spark uh, inside Azure Synapse Analytics. The great thing about this is it has an auto pause setting of 15 minutes after idling. A Data Lake Store Gen 2 account is created, and then there's a workspace identity that's given uh, a blob, st a storage blob data contributor role to the storage account, uh, and then a new file system is created inside the storage account to be used by Synapse Analytics. 
Two of the more important pieces of this deployment are the logic apps that do pausing and resuming. Um, you know, the SQL pools don't pause themselves, they'll be on. And if you're in a POC environment, chances are you're not using this 24 seven, it's not a production work uh, environment. And so you'll want it to pause and potentially resume. And so I uh, this, this template will deploy some logic apps that will do that for you. You can set the times that you want it to pause and to resume. Uh, and so I'll show you how to adjust those. For me, I actually turned this off after deployment. So I'll show you how to turn that logic app off. I don't need mine to resume automatically. If I'm gonna get in there to do some work, I can start it manually because I'm not in there enough to need that feature. And then both logic apps have managed identities that are given contributor, contributor rights to the resource group. This is so that they can pause and resume the SQL pools. And then um, the workspace identity is granted control to all SQL pools and all SQL on-demand pools. In addition to what's deployed, this template has the purpose of the template, which is really to deploy a POC environment for Synapse, uh, prereqs, which you need to be the owner on the subscription in order to do this. And then there are some post deployment scripts, which are important that I will walk you through and show you through, show you in a little bit. And so those uh, instructions are down here as well. Okay, let's get into deploying the POC. <laughs> Okay, let's go ahead and deploy the POC. Before we click the deploy to POC button, I generally will right click it and say open a new tab. That's because we're gonna come back to this document soon to look at the post deployment script. So I just wanna make sure that's still available and I don't have to go hunting around for it. So I'll right click here, open a new tab. And if you're already logged into the Azure portal, it'll go through and get you to the deployment window. If not, you'll need to log in. Um, it's automatically selected my primary resource or my primary subscription, excuse me, and then I need to create a resource group. So I'm going to say RG Azure Synapse vid1. It says it's available. And then it's going to have me choose my region. I'm going to be in East US. I'm in the West Coast, or sorry, East Coast. So I'm going to choose East US. There's all other regions as well. There's an East US too, but East US is fine. If you click this, you'll be able to go through the various regions that uh, maybe find, find one that's closest to you. Uh, for company TLA, what it's really looking here is just a three-letter acronym. You can use your company three-letter acronym. I'm going to use my initials in this case. Um, and then there are some settings here around connectivity, uh, which is the allow all connections in. We can set that to false if we want to. Um, whether or not you want the Spark node to be deployed, I would say yes. You know, add that Spark node, especially since it pauses after 15 minutes of idle time. Um, I'll go with small in my case. And then it's going to want our SQL login info. So I'm going to grab that. For the SKU size, this is the size of the SQL pool. Uh, DW100C is the smallest, so that's what I'm going to go with. Uh, and then the frequency here is looking at that job that pauses and resumes your SQL, uh, your Azure Synapse instance, right? So um, I want mine only to run during weekdays. I don't want it resuming on the weekends, right? Uh, you might want to do daily if there's going to be weekend use of this environment. And then for the resume time, you know, my time zone's Eastern, but for the resume time, I think 7 a.m. is makes much more sense than 9 p.m. And then for the pause time, I really wanna push mine back to maybe 8 p.m. at night. Okay, once we have all that in, then we can click review and create. It'll go out and run a validation step to make sure that the template can be deployed. And once we've run that validation, we can click create. It's initializing the deployment and submitting it. And here is the deployment overview window. So this will take probably 15 to 20 minutes and um, as it's being deployed, you'll see various items pop in here as they uh, are sent to the resource manager. So you can see some of them have already been sent here, the logic app, uh, something around the resource group, and then now uh, the creation of the storage account. And you'll see that's been accepted. We'll see if there's an update here. Yep, that one's listed as okay. You can even click in and look at the details of that deployment. So now it looks like it's created the creating the workspace can refresh again okay no further updates yet so we'll let this run and we'll be back once it's been deployed okay now that it's been provisioned let's click on the go to resource group link and it'll take us to where our resources are deployed 
The template deploys uh, six resources, the first of which is a storage account. This is our Data Lake Gen 2 storage account. And containers, you'll see there is a, ca a container here that use that prefix or that uh, little acronym we gave it, that SDH, which was my initials, to create the container name. And then there's a set of folders in here for the workspace that were created. We can also use this Data Lake Gen 2 workspace to put more data that we can query against using Synapse. Uh, in addition is the Synapse workspace. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, next is the SQL pool. This is uh, the provision query capacity that we have, the SQL DW query capacity. You'll see there's a way to manually pause it, even though we have the auto, uh, the logic apps to do pausing um, on a schedule. Uh, and then there's an option to scale it. If we click on this, there uh, we can raise this up here. Right now it's set to DW100, um, but we can you know scale it up and we'll get price estimates as we scale. I'm not gonna adjust that right now. Okay, if we go back to the resource group, we'll see that our logic apps are here as well. Um, we'll go to those in a second. I'm just gonna show real quick the Apache Spark pool. Um, there are auto pause settings. Remember we set this to 15 minutes. So if we wanted to adjust that, we can do so. And then there's also a set of auto scale settings. Um, it, it'll allow us to adjust the nose side. I chose small, I can choose medium or large. These are like t-shirt sizes for the individual nodes. And then we can uh, scale them between three and 40 nodes where I can kind of pull this out to all the way up to 200. Um, in addition, we can disable auto scaling if we just want to set it to a specific size and leave it and not have it scale up and down. I'll leave those auto scale settings and I'm gonna cancel that. Okay, going back to the resource group, if we click into the logic app, you'll see there's one logic app for pausing and one logic app for resuming. I'm gonna walk you through the pause logic app real quick. Once we're here, I can click on edit and this will take us to the logic app designer experience. The first uh, item in this logic app is a step that sets the interval. We set it to weekly running Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So during the work week and we want it to pause uh, at 8 p.m on the Eastern Standard Time Zone. Uh, we'll initialize some variables here that have kind of subscription ID and other things. And then we'll initialize another variable to hold our active query count. We're gonna set that value initially to one. Uh, we'll make a call to the resource manager um, backend to the API, the resource manager API, and we'll pass some variables like the subscription ID, the resource group name, the name of the uh, Synapse workspace, and the name of the pools. Those were initialized here in this API variable section. And then we'll use the managed, managed identity that we created in the process to query the API. And then we will parse some of the JSON. And here is a uh, true false statement that we're gonna leverage. The first is to look at the query. It's gonna run the query and it's gonna get the active query count. So you'll see this once again, queries the resource management plane and looks for uh, the data warehouse user activities. We're trying to see if that value is greater than one. We're gonna update that variable. And then we're gonna say if it is, if the active query count is greater than zero, then we're gonna wait, we're gonna wait five minutes and we're gonna do it again, okay? If it's not greater than zero, then we will uh, pause the SQL DW. Okay, and so that's how this query works. I'm not gonna make any changes here, so we'll just go back and we'll run, go back one more. Let's go into the resume. The resume uh, works very much the same way. So you'll see there's a recurrence here that'll occur every day and in this one it's set to one week intervals at i think this is set to seven runs at 7 a.m so you can see here um, and once again we'll initialize some variables we'll query the management plane for the state of the synapse environment and then we'll run something down here i actually don't want this to run because i don't want it to resume automatically so i'm going to go up here and set this this to disable uh, this is, once again, my preference. I'm not in here every day, so I don't want it to auto start. If if you do, you just have to know that when you come in to turn this on, you may have to wait, you know, one to five minutes for the SQL pool to start up. Okay, going back in, uh, let's go into the Synapse workspace. 
In this tab, we'll see a lot of various settings here. I'm gonna actually uh, minimize this, the essentials area, and we can see down here, it'll show us the SQL pools we have attached to this workspace. We can see the one we have created as well as the on-demand pool. You can leverage that for on-demand SQL queries and then our Apache Spark pool as well. Lots of various settings in here as well as uh, firewall settings and endpoint connection settings. What I'm gonna go and do is click this Launch Synapse Studio and that will open up the uh, Azure Synapse Analytics uh, Studio experience. This is the initial pane that we'll see here. Uh, on this left side, we'll have a set of areas that we will be going through. The first is the data area. This is where we'll see our database that's attached. There's nothing in there right now. And then link to resources like our Data Lake Gen 2 account. Uh, we'll have to go through and do something with that as well. Um, actually, we can see the data in here. So these are our folders that are listed. Uh, we're gonna go down to this manage section in a second actually. Under develop, we can use this to develop uh, SQL scripts, uh, notebooks, if we wanna have a Python notebook. And then under orchestrate, this is where we'll do our data orchestration. So we can create copy activities or pipeline activities. If you're familiar with Azure Data Factory, this experience will be really familiar to you. Okay, we're gonna go back to the docs and go through the last step, the post deployment step. <laughs> Okay, there are a couple post-deployment steps we'll need to complete. Uh, the first of which is to launch Synapse Studio, which we've already done. However, we wanna really set up a managed virtual network to connect to our Data Lake storage account, and we'll need to do that in the Synapse Studio portal. So I'm gonna walk you through those steps. Uh, the first thing we'll do is click on Manage, and if we look at our linked services, you'll notice that um, our Data Lake, Gen store, Data Lake Storage Gen 2 account is not using a private endpoint. So if we click down here at Manage Private Endpoints, we can create a new Managed Private Endpoint, select Data Lake Storage Gen 2, and we'll give it a name. And we'll select our subscription from the list and the storage account that was created and click Create. Once we hit Create, it'll enter a provisioning state. Uh, we'll give it a little bit to uh, show as succeeded and once that's succeeded we should say see the approval state as pending okay there we go so the approval state is pending let's click on the name of the private endpoint and there's a link down here that will take us into the Azure portal to approve this inside the storage account uh, networking area we're gonna see that open up here and you'll see we're in private endpoint connections and here is the pending connection state. We select the little checkbox and hit approve. Uh, you can type in a description and select yes and then we'll show that as approved. Now it will take up to a minute for it to show up inside Synapse. So we'll close this here and you'll see this is in pending and we'll say the approval state may be stale by a minute. So we'll give it one minute to refresh and then we'll check back in here. Now, if we refresh, we'll see that the approval state is set to approved. And if we go back into our linked services, once this refreshes, you'll see that our Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 account is now set to be using the private endpoint. I hope you enjoyed that brief look into Azure Synapse Analytics, as well as how to set up the POC environment. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Or if you would like, connect with me on LinkedIn. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.